Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to apply some color like this in Sketchbook Pro 7. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is a character of mine called Blackstone Eternal and his little sidekick bot right there. And this is a book that I work on. If you've uh, visited my channel, you probably already know about that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I work out the color in this. It's actually really easy and fun to do. Um, I'll take off these color layers that I've already applied effects to and I like to separate all of them to make it kind of easier to uh, to see what's going on here and to adjust. So this is my initial line work that was uh, also created in the software. So what I do is I turn each layer that I add to multiply and I lock transparency after I fill in what's called a flat. So essentially, um, I'll take this one and duplicate it. So you just click here, hold, duplicate layer like that. And now I'll color in uh, with the transparency locked. I'll just color this in as a solid blue. So let me go back here, click on this, or sorry, is it this one, this one right here. Click on this, pick a, you know, kind of a, dull blue or something like that. Now because it's already been filled in and because it's already locked right there I can simply up the brush size really large and I can fill this all back in basically washing away all those little tones that I did. And that's what I want to do because I want to show you the process in which I did this. So I'll size this brush up really large. Just go through here and paint this all back in as a solid blue. Okay, so now um, essentially this is the way that I'll color anything. Again, I set it to multiply so that basically it will go behind the uh, black line layer. Um, you could just separate the line layer as long as it's its own layer. You can just paint behind it. I actually brought this back in as a flattened image, so I did it this way. I'm not sure how this will work out for printing. I never really have to deal with that with the type of printing that I do, uh, so I'm fortunate there. But Again, if you do want to paint behind those black layers, you would just make sure that the black layer has been separated onto its own layer and paint behind it. So click to multiply here. You can freely paint. It'll drop behind the, the black line art. Then you essentially, what, what makes it really fast with Sketchbook Pro is if I want to paint those tones like you saw on the other layers, I can simply grab, you know, the airbrush. I can darken the tone by clicking on this uh, lagoon here and pulling down, or this color puck I should say, pulling down until I get a, a nice darker blue that I want. I've got my airbrush selected, I've got lock transparency on there, and now I can just freely go in there and add some darker tones. So I picture that the bottom of the arm and the inside of the arm is all going to be darker, so I you know, sh shade that down and just repeat that process over the different muscle groups so you see it's really easy to do it's it's quick easy and fun to kind of paint this way or color this way i should say and i do predominantly most of my coloring in photoshop but uh, certain things that are like this uh, that are quick and easy to do um, I'll do them here. So essentially I go through and flat all the uh, all the parts of the character here. So you know the alien starts off as a dark green, uh, bot starts off as a medium light blue. So I flat all those in just like you see here and then I just start applying tones to try to round out the forms. You know the little lines that I've left myself as guides for shading. I shade in those areas first that I try to treat it like if I was working off you know another artist's work even though I'm the one that created this and I knew what direction I was going to take with it uh, I still look at the artwork objectively like it was somebody else's work I feel it's a good thing to do you're always gonna kind of uh, get the best results with that mentality in my opinion okay so there's that now what I'll do I can grab this uh, again, this color puck, I can hold Alt and click on that color and get back to my original color. 
I can drag this upward now and now I can fill in a little bit of my highlight just that quick and easy Okay, and then finally, I'll probably take a little bit of uh, white. There I can hold Alt and just sample the background. Hold Space Bar, grab the Move Tool and slide in. And then now I can grab, I guess I'll still use the airbrush. Sometimes I'll use the uh, hard pencil tool at this stage. But I'll just take this color now and I'll do a little kind of glared highlight off the edging of the character. Little dots or something inside the... Uh, Whitest part. And keep in mind, I'm also interactively sizing the brush with the bracket keys. That's that little clicking you hear. I'm just basically keeping my right hand on those bracket keys and uh, moving the size back and forth. I'm just trying to bring this out a little bit more. You know, he's uh, he's basically supposed to be a metallic uh, black. But then, you know, I always give like kind of a highlight of blue in the character's skin. And then also um, the little tiny specular, you know, flares. And I try to keep them, I always want more of a, a little bit more of an animated look to this character. Um, I'm not a big fan of the overly dark and gruesome look to everything so I try to make him look a little bit more you know he already looks gruesome as a character I think somewhat so I try to you know give him a little bit more of a fun look with the colors and the you know animated look I guess is the way I explain it but to each their own whatever style you're after you can pull it off this software is very versatile and this method uh, will work in any direction you take it so there's the blue. Now I'll compare it to the uh, other one I did. I'll drop this layer. Oh, hold on. Drop that back in. Yeah, it's about the same. I think I got a little bit more variation in this one. And I obviously did the uh, yellow glow in the eyes. So I'll stick with this one, but you know that'll show you the effect that I'm after there. Okay, so now I'll show you another element uh, or another way of doing something. Um, so the alien here, I just filled in the green, the solid green there. As of, Again, you, you're going to want to flatten everything. So all the separate layers, it makes it for you know good for easy editing. Uh, so for instance, the armor, I flatten this in as a, a light gold or a medium gold color. <clears throat> excuse me. And then just basically worked around it and did my highlights and you know low lights and all that and just worked up to that form. Um, so initially it started... As this kind of yellowish gold right there was the original color. I actually can see a lot of it right there. So that was the original flattened color. So you just grab each one of those elements, draw them in as a flattened uh, color layer, and then start applying your tones. So like here, get to the green there. You know, I started off with this light green. I added a little bit of yellow in here and a little bit of this dark green. The other thing you can do too is you can still... You know, you don't have to always use this cell shading effect with little airbrush highlights. You know, whatever works for you. But you can also grab these blending brushes here that don't have any, or smudge brushes, that don't have any actual color associated with them. And even with that layer locked, you can get in here and blend some of these colors around. So if you want to see some of these darker greens come in and make the... Uh, alien look more veiny or whatever you can do that you can just pull those tones around and it's really nice to work this way because once you lock the transparency you it stays right in that safe zone so if I want to you know add more dark green in here I can simply select the darker green I can pull down on this to get a nice dark green in the same 
tones and I can just paint that in really quick. You know, so maybe I want to make that alien look like he's really, you know, it, like he comes from behind the character more. So I darken some of this. And say I do a little bit of that in here to round out that form. But then say I want a little bit more of those yellow highlights in here. I can sample that from there. And just paint those in. I look better as a as an edging. And then I can hold Alt, sample the background for white, and add just a couple little tiny white specks to give it a little bit more of a, a glossy feel. And that's really it. You know, it's it's really simple. Um, you know, it's not a digital painting effect. It's more like cell shading. Uh, which is, you know, great for comics and, and works out really well. Um, but yeah, when you're done, you can easily get... Oh, well, I didn't go with that background. I went with that one. Um, easily get something like that. So, you know, hopefully that answers some questions for you. Um, you know, if you do have any questions, drop them in the comments section below. And I'll be sure to answer them for you. Uh, also started a new channel you can check out, Ram Studio Comics. It is a paid channel. Uh, but there'll be a lot of good content very specific to drawing comics and doing illustration work. So I always appreciate the support if you can at least check it out and let me know what you think. Um, so more stuff on the way real soon. And uh, thanks for watching. Keep drawing. Keep having fun.